and welcome to another episode of In My Room, the series where I talk about the hidden aspects of teen bedroom culture. I'm in my bed tonight because I thought it would be appropriate for today's subject, which is the sleepover. Essentially, a sleepover is when two or more people that don't live together spend the night at one or the other's house. Usually, a sleepover, also called a slumber party, is something that is really commonplace with tweens and teenagers. We grow out of it as we get older and move out of our parents' houses. The funny thing about sleepovers is, is that often you don't end up sleeping. There's a lot of like excited energy and a lot of like chaotic energy. Sleepovers generally involve a lot of sugar consumption and a lot of junk food consumption. So that's the really pure form of a sleepover, but sleepovers can take many forms and sort of the polar opposite form of that type of sleepover is when you're using the sleepover as sort of a lie or an excuse or a way to get away with something as a teenager. So you'll tell your parents that you're sleeping over at such and such friend's house and it's usually someone they know and feel comfortable with and you might actually be sleeping there. Worst case scenario, you're not sleeping there and you're out doing whatever it is that you can't do at home or you can't do because it breaks a curfew or you would get in trouble if your parents found out or whatever that is. And best case scenario, you actually are sleeping there but you're gonna be doing something before you end up sleeping there and maybe they are the friend with the cool parents that let you drink in the basement or whatever it is that you've decided is gonna happen. Sleepovers are a huge time for experimentation. Parents are really down to allow their kids to sleep over at their friends' houses because it takes pressure away from them to have to like watch their kid and generally parents trust that their kids are where they say they are. It feels okay to let your child sleep at a friend's house especially when you know that their parents are also going to be there. It's sort of implied that their parents are going to be there, so it feels safe and easy and, and pretty relaxed. I think the sleepover ends up being sort of this teenage hack to like get more time with their friends, get more time to explore certain things, go to parties, do other things, hang out in parking lots and drink Slurpees all night. Whatever it is that you want to do as a teenager, the sleepover really allows that, whether it happens at the house, in the bedroom, or it happens outside and you're sneaking out. So when I think of a traditional sleepover, I'm thinking makeovers, manicures, face masks, feather boas, listening to music really loudly, dancing, maybe like making a video or like making something with your friends, playing pranks, playing games, watching movies, playing video games. You're sort of not under parental supervision. Obviously parents are usually home, but they tend to leave you alone. Many times the bedroom does house the sleepover, but a lot of times it'll trickle out into other parts of the household, such as the basement or the living room or a common area, co-ed sleepover. Absolutely not, don't even go there territory because obviously only boys and girls can like kiss and like do bad things at sleepovers because we live in a heteronormative society, but not to go off on that tangent. I actually wish that adults had more sleepovers because it was really fun. I have a lot of fond memories from my sleepovers. I mean, I think I slept at someone's house like every weekend almost. They're fun, right? So why don't we just keep, keep it going? Did we only use sleepovers as a way to sort of like evade our parents' rules? I think that's enough for tonight. I'm going to curl up and pretend that I have a bunch of friends here, but I don't. So until next time, bye.